Nothing fancy here. Part three of the AK-47 versus AR-15 argument. I don't think I'll ever settle it, but I'm going to share my takes and maybe a few opinions along the way, trying to keep it as objective as I can, sharing information as we go. And at the end of part two, we were talking about this firepower, and that's where I'm going to pick up uh, here in part three. Let me start by saying that, remember we talk about systems, and the gun is a system working along with the optics, if you choose to have them, your stock, you know, your barrel, your sights, whatever, and also your feeding device. Without a good feeding device in a semi-automatic or automatic firearm, your system is done. It ain't going to work. And that will kind of go along the firepower and, backing up a bit, the reliability talking point. <coughs> Excuse me. On the table here, I have a couple of these feeding devices. We'll start off with the AR-15. This is a PMAG loaded up. This is a GI Teflon-coated standard gray variety with a Magpul follower in it uh, magazine. The AR-15, if you give it a good magazine, and I do think that a GI contract magazine, or this one, for instance, is a Colt manufacturer, are excellent. I've had very good luck with them, and I've never had a problem with them, especially if you retrofit them with the Magpul followers. Although I will say even the green followers are very effective, and they work great, and I've never seen jams with those either. Uh, by myself or my associates or dudes I've been shooting with. That's just me and your mileage may vary. The only thing I've really seen a problem with is if you have a fully loaded GI magazine, by the way, those that's going to weigh about a pound, like I've said uh, in some of my LABE tactical gear reviews, um, you're going to bend your feed lips if you drop it on a hard surface like concrete, and then you could have some serious issues. Protect your feed lips, you'll be fine. This is a P-Mag by Magpul, great magazine, with a little viewing window there to let you know you're loaded, and it has a lip protector on it. Kind of gets to what I just said, protect your lips, you'll be all right. And also it takes tension off those feed lips for long-term storage, which I like. Uh, have heard some issues on P-Mags in very cold weather, cracking of feed lips with the first generation. I think they are in the midst of fixing that right now. Still an excellent magazine. And my point is that the feeding devices, if you choose some quality ones, which I feel both of these are, the AR-15 is going to be very reliable for you in that regard. And that kind of, again, gets to the firepower issue. How about the AK-47? Well, here is a polycarbonate Bulgarian clear AK mag. From what I understand, again, I'm not the end-all AK expert. Good magazine. Waffle pattern Tapco. Also, polycarbonate, nylon, not sure which, standard Bulgarian steel magazine. Very reliable, very uh, effective for what it is, 30 round. One interesting thing about the AK mags, which I like, is that even the 40 rounders are reliable. My 40 rounder dropped on the floor here. So here's a 40 rounder, and guess what? They're reliable. Um, I, I'm not so sure about AR-15. I know there's some 40 rounders out there. I personally have never had a need for them. I think it's an odd shape for an AR to have a 40 round mag. It doesn't fit in my pouches. Uh, it just kind of complicates my system. Maybe the same could be said for a 40 round AR, AK mag. Um, that kind of gets into a little bit of the ergonomics. Is the shape of the magazine and which pouches will fit where. Um, I could show you and this uh, LBE vest, and that's one reason I have it on the table, but I don't want to lift everything up and switch it around. Putting these magazines in the pouches, uh, the AK is more of a banana shape. I think I've spoken to that in some other videos. And that means it's kind of going to take up more real estate on your load bearing equipment vest, especially if you decide to go 40 round. Uh, me, I would just stick to 30s. It's not as big of a uh, you know, a banana presentation, and it's going to be easier to store, easier to access, to, and you can probably do it uh, more compactly, compactly on your carry system. AR-15, because of the cartridge shape, I mean, you're talking a fatter versus thinner cartridge, it's not as big of a banana shape, more compact, more of a straight line for storage. To me, that's a plus. 
It makes it so I can carry more magazines and less space on my person. And again, that space is going to be competing against some other stuff. Maybe, I don't know, a pistol, pistol magazines, flashlight, first aid gear. You name it. You've seen my LBE setups. I've done reviews on them. There's a lot going on there. Um, another consideration, by the way, on the AK mags, if you do go with a waffle pattern like this Tapco, um, they don't slide well against each other. Like if I put two in the pouch back here, two waffle patterns are going to tend to grab on each other. And in a way, I kind of, not for weight, get to that in a bit, but um, I kind of like the steel because they can slide against each other without getting caught up. A note on this Bulgarian mag, this clip right here, or this protrusion on the magazine, the retention tab, I guess it's called, that's kind of fat and it makes it difficult to release in some of the AKs I have here tonight. Being a Vepper, I have a Krebs over there, and then the SLR 107. All three, this thing is really hard to engage. It's almost like you have to sand that tab and reduce some of its thickness. You might reduce the strength while you're at it, so be careful. Again, your mileage may vary, but just be aware. But these are all quality feeding devices which will work in both of these guns. Um, stay away from crap stuff. Uh, you know, no name. You don't know the maybe the um, the origin of the magazine. That might be a little bit harder to do with an AK because sometimes you won't know what the origin is. Uh, but generally, if you can look at it and you, it looks like this one, this one to me looks like a quality manufactured. AK mag as best as could be expected you're probably not going to have a problem with it so firepower is still a draw use quality mags by the way here's this cool one and this gun right here is running a polycarbonate black magazine it's a composite mag that's a composite body actually and with steel of course a steel bottom and a steel feeding lip as well just a, an aside on to ergonomics, lots to talk about here. This perhaps drives more to the heart as to why a lot of dudes prefer the AR-15 over the AK than perhaps any other reason. And that is the ergonomics on the AR-15 are generally acknowledged, including myself, nothing fancy, raising my hand here, as being superior to those of the AK. Let's discuss the ergos on the AK first. One of the problems that a lot of dudes have is this very short length of pull of the stock, at least as it comes from the factory. That's a 12 and a half inch length of pull, give or take. We like, as American shooters and bigger dudes all around the world, I guess, 14 inches is a lot more comfortable. So we don't feel like our face, our fat face, is squashed up against the back portion of the receiver. That's always how I feel when I'm shooting a stock AK. I just feel scrunched up. I don't like it. Um, now, there's ways to rectify that. One is to buy an AK that has a longer length of pull from the factory with whatever stock system they're running. Um, there's some Bulgarian AKs. I think the SGL 20s do come in a 14 inch, 14 inch length of pull. Very cool. It's a great way to solve it. Or, like this user, you could put on a Tapco set of furniture. It's really coolly colored ACU furniture with an AR-15 hmm, style stock. Again, it's kind of mimicking the AR-15 ergonomics, but it does it well. Having shot this stock on this Mac 90, US spec Mac 90, I will tell you, I love it. Good stock and it solves that length of pull problem. I'm also not a super fan, guys, of a standard AK grip. This is a very nice one from Arsenal. I like it. Uh, actually, I, this might be the Tapco grip. I stand corrected. Um, but I don't like a real, uh, the standard wood AK grip. I just find it a little bit on the small side. Now, that being said, there's some purists in the AK community. They like it to be just like it comes from the factory. That gets into the second kind of cool. They like it to be very true to the original design. Uh, when it comes to AKs, I'm not that way. I want to mod it out just like Sadly Missing has done with this gun to make it ergonomic for him. Um, I would like to see a longer stock on that one. Again, that's a Tapco grip on this. Very nice one, one I might add. I love it. Uh, I hope I'm not mistaken on that grip, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And uh, that solves the grip problem for me. How's the forend on AKs? Uh, I actually have no problems with them. And you have seen, of course, that the, some forends 
do include a vertical grip kind of carved out of the wood furniture. And that works. Not exactly the coolest looking setup if you ask me, but it works. No problem. Tapco makes that really nice Galil fore end for the AK. That's a huge improvement, I think. It fills the hand better. Uh, maybe some might find it just a little bit blocky, but overall, it is definitely an improvement in the ergonomic department of the AK-47. Okay, so how are the ergonomics on an AR-15 as opposed to the AK-47 variant? In a word, outstanding. Even as it comes from the factory, an AR-15 has some really good ergonomic options. There you're looking at the standard A2 full-length stock that many guns come with. And I find it totally functional, and most users really don't have to replace it in terms of ergonomics. They might want to replace it just for a cool factor. They like uh, the feel of maybe a different stock better than the A2, but it works. Um, as it comes from the factory, and I really don't have a totally stock AR-15 to show you in this lineup, but as it comes from most factories, and I'm talking Bushmaster, Rock River, Colt, and other makers, everything pretty much works on AR-15 in terms of ergonomics. The pistol grip is functional. The stock is functional. There's no problems with the foregrip. Length of pull is pretty squared away. That's not a problem. Um, it just works. If you want to upgrade it, it's really easy to do, too, with an AR-15. You have a lot of options, stock options, if you will. First off, you have the Magpul variety, and I'm not going to go into all the variances and stocks. Magpul makes, of course, this CTR. It's an excellent choice. A UBR, some other models. You have the Sop Mod stock. Oh, gosh, there's just so many. It's not even funny. If you can't find what you want in terms of a stock on an AR-15, something is wrong with you. Now, you might have to spend some money to get it, but trust me, you will find something that is very comfortable and should fit your system very well. Same goes for pistol grips. Here is a Myad by Magpul. Awesome uh, pistol grip. Probably my overall favorite for the AR-15. Works outstandingly. Has interchangeable... Um, portions on it to really suit your hand size and what you're looking for. And then that takes us to the fore end. In other words, what type of rail system would you like? Again, oh, there's one. That AR-15 there wears a standard carbine length handguard. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that handguard. In my AR-15 reviews, I'll talk a little bit more about that. How a lot of guys pretty much replace them when they don't have to. But if you want to hang some stuff off your AR-15, lights, lasers, maybe some hand grips, um, it will improve the ergonomics for you. And that goes to the versatility of the AR-15 system. So we can put a vertical hand grip here, which makes the gun for a lot of shooters more ergonomic, more comfortable to shoot. Again, I said that the, AR the AK has that same thing. It does have vertical grips, but they're carved in. Uh, in my opinion, they're kind of goofy looking and there's not a lot to have them, and you might have to search it out to find them. AK, no big deal. You, a lot of AK, I'm sorry, ARs is what I meant to say. ARs are more frequently coming with free-floated rails, too. And as such, it's a real easy jump to add a vertical grip. And there's one right there. I forgot that. And I believe that's an ergo grip, a short one. One of my favorites, by the way. Lightweight, inexpensive. So that improves your ergonomics on your AR tremendously for a lot of shooters. Okay, so those are stock ergonomics to consider, but how about the controls? Again, I believe that the AR-15 really comes out on top for ease of use, generally speaking. We'll start with the safety. The safety on an AR, M4, M16 is, of course on the right side of the gun. Kind of blows if you're a left hand shooter, sorry about that, but for right handed guys, can it get any more ergonomic? It, there it is, right next to your thumb. If you're firing a full auto gun, of course you select it accordingly. This one's just a semi-automatic, so safe, fire, bam, done. How about mag changes? Well, if we flip the gun over, our mag button, release button, which is recessed to pre prevent accidental actuation, that's what the raised ribs are for around the button 
right here. Push a button, it falls free vertically. By the way, we do not have to rock the mag in. It just goes in, goes out in a vertical presentation. That makes it faster. Very, very nice. Those two um, control placements right there, the safety and the mag release button, huge. That really makes an AR-15 fast into action and fast to reload. But it gets better. With an AR-15, when we shot our la when we shot our last shot, the bolt remains open. Thus, again, speeding up a magazine change. We'll pop the magazine out, insert a freshly or a fresh magazine, and here's our bolt release that we can just slap with the palm of our hand, actuate with our thumb, whatever your technique is, whatever it is, practice with it and get good at it. But bam, we release that, and what do you know? I'm just going to release this softly. It's not my gun. I take care of it. And you're back into action. Those, That battery of arms in the AR-15, I absolutely love. Now let's go to the AK. More complicated, not as ergonomic. Remember, let's keep it real. First off, I'm going to start with the safety. Um, the safety sucks on an AK. I absolutely hate a normal safety. There are some modifications, like Krebs is working that help improve the AK safety system, but it's kind of uh, pretty crude. It does function as a dust cover, blocking the lower uh, the slot here for the bolt. But to actuate it, I mean, how are you going to do that fast? You basically have to come out of the firing position, take your whole fingers down, and I'm sure there's other techniques. I'm not saying mine is the best, but it's not easy and it's not fast. It sucks. That's the safety on the AK. Moreover, you cannot load the gun with the safety on, unlike an AR. You can have the safety on and load your, load your AR-15. Not so quick on an AK, because here's what happens if you try to do that. You're going to run into your safety catch. It has to be in the fire position. Then you can charge around into the chamber. Oh, and by the way, you don't have a last shot hold open with an AK-47. Um, you're going to go bam, 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 click, oh, guess what, I'm out of ammunition. Well, it gets worse. The bolt didn't lock back into the open position, so your loading process is a little bit more complicated. By the way, when you do load, you're going to have to rock the magazine out. Here's your magazine release, speaking of ergonomics. It can go forward either with your shooting finger and again, I'm trying to look through the viewfinder to do all this, so it's a weird angle. Someone else's film may be a lot quicker. So you just push that forward. It's really easy to bring the magazine out. I'm not trying to act like it's hard. However, to put it back in, not as quick as an AR-15. I don't care who you are. That's because you've got to locate it in the well, rock it into position. Uh, can you do it quickly? I'm sure you can, and I'm sure many of you guys watching this say, oh man, I'm really fast with my AK changes, uh, or my mag changes. Uh, I have no doubts about that. It will take practice, and for most users, it is not going to be as fast as an AR-15. That's fact, in my opinion. Um, namely because a vertical insertion of a magazine like the AR is just quicker. You know, it's easier. This is almost a two-step, three-step process. Make sure it's hooked on there takes a lot of practice, a lot of muscle memory to get good at it. Yeah, it's the same system as, a, I don't know, M1A, M14, Mini 14 system, and I've shot that one for years, um, and yeah, I can get good at it. I still prefer the AR-15 system over to that. How about the sights? And no, these probably aren't the best ones to show you because this one has optics on it. I want to get you a gun that has just normal, standard AR-15 sights. And I'm going to bring this Mac 90 back because it has irons on it. I'm going to roll in this little Bushmaster AR-15 to demonstrate the sights on the type. Now, this is not a stock setup. This is actually a GG&G rear flip-up sight, but it uses the same principle as all AR-15s use, and that is, generally speaking, two different sizes of aperture on the rear sight to, to create a ghost ring type of, of effect. And I will tell you, it's very effective. It's quick in alignment, and also it provides pretty darn good accuracy while you're at it. 
easy to change windage is also on the side and we change the elevation on most AR-15s that I know of by rotating the front sight. That's actually a national match front sight post on this specific AR-15. The sights, generally speaking, on the type, and I'm talking ARs here, are excellent. Quick to align, durable, easy to adjust, generally speaking, and versatile. You can get all types and varieties as well as evidenced by these backup iron sights here that will extend and retract as needed to clear optics. Dudes, I'm already out of time for part three. Whew, I will tell you too, this is a lot of work getting this review done. Uh, but I'm going to stick to it. Part four coming at you. Nothing fancy. Come on back. Thanks. Thanks.